So, you have a movie for me? Yes, sir, I do. It's called The Ring. Oh, movies about rings are super hot right now. Does it have hobbits in it? No, it doesn't. It's an adaptation of a Japanese film called Ringu. Oh, okay, so does it have, uh, Hobbit 2s in it? It doesn't, no. This is a spooky movie about a videotape that if you watch it, you die seven days later. Oh, very spooky. So what happens in the movie? Well, at the beginning of the movie, we're gonna meet this high school girl who actually watched the tape seven days earlier. Uh-oh, sounds like trouble. Yeah, and so she walks into a room and sees something and instantly her face turns all gray and, and deceased and, and screamy. So it was trouble, I was right. Yeah, and later at her wake, we're gonna get a spooky flash of what she looked like when they found her in the closet. What, how did she get in the closet? I don't know. Fair enough, so what does she look like? Well, she looks like she died, but also kind of like someone just got her the most thoughtful gift. Oh, how very sweet. Yeah, so then after, we're gonna meet this creepy little kid who's the cousin of that girl, right? Oh, creepy, huh? Like in the sixth sense? No, 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 not at all like that. Oh, okay. Yeah, no, this is just a creepy kid. He makes creepy drawings, he communicates with the dead, and while he's at a young girl's wake, he wanders into her room and pokes around. That sounds like the kid in the sixth sense, though. Oh, like the kid in sixth sense. Yeah, absolutely. Sorry, I thought you were talking about Bruce Willis. Oh, uh -huh, whoops. Whoopsie. So what happens at this wake? Well, the mom of the dead girl asks the main character, Rachel, to look into this, because she thinks it's weird that her 16-year-old's heart just stopped. Right, that is a little suspicious, and also she was gray. So Rachel goes to this cabin where the girl and her friends watch the tape and watches it herself. And what's on the tape? Uh, a bunch of vaguely creepy images that look like a first year film student's attempt at being edgy. Oh, pretentious artist ghosts are tight. Yeah, so after she watches the tape, a phone rings and when she answers, all she hears is seven days. Okay, very ominous. So now Rachel has to find a video expert to figure out what's going on with this weird supernatural videotape. Man, it's gonna be tough to find a video expert willing to help with a weird request like that. Actually, it's gonna be super easy. Barely an inconvenience. Oh, really? Yes, yeah, so your ex-boyfriend and baby daddy Noah happens to be a video expert. Oh, that is convenient. It is. So then he comes over to her place and watches the tape. She lets him watch the tape she suspects makes people die. She does. Very inconsiderate. Yeah, and so after he leaves her place, she notices there's a voicemail. Oh, what does it say? Well, she deletes it without listening. What? Isn't she actively investigating this thing? Why would she delete that? Because what if it's spooky? Oh, I I didn't consider that it might be spooky. That's a good point. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So what happens if you watch the tape and you're nowhere near a phone? Oh, unclear. Huh, okay. So anyway, she makes a copy of the tape and her and Noah start really looking into this. How did they do that? Well, luckily the ghost girl left behind enough clues to fill up two and a half hours of runtime. Oh, well, great. And so Rachel's gonna go visit her niece's friend who's now in a mental hospital because she was there the night she died. And how does that go? Well, this girl's all messed up now, but when her and Rachel touch, she's like, oh, you have four days left to live. What, so this girl now now has videotape detection powers because she was in the house? I guess so. And then Noah really starts to believe because he sees that his face is all smudged up in pictures and videos. And what's that about? It's part of it. I don't know. It's just part of it. Okay, if you say so. Also, Rachel's creepy son watches the tape. Oh no, how did he get his hands on it? Well, Rachel just left it lying around at home. An extremely reckless mother. Kind of. And so then we're gonna have Rachel do just a bunch of reading about this family called the Morgans whose daughter is the ghost girl. Oh, uh, watching people Reed does make for good cinema. It sure does. So she's gonna go to their horse farm and try to get to the bottom of this. And how does that go? Oh, not well. Rachel watches this tape of the ghost girl, Samara, and then her dad appears out of nowhere and hits Rachel over the head. Oh, geez, she's in trouble now. Actually, no, because he walks right upstairs and electrocutes himself in just the most over-the-top way. If he was headed upstairs to electrocute himself, why bother bonking her on the head? I don't know. He felt like bonking her on the head. Well, okay then. And Rachel's gonna talk to her creepy son on the phone and it turns out that the ghost girl's just been straight up communicating with him. Oh, she has? Yeah, she's showing him things like that she lived in a barn and now she lives in the dark place. Wow, so Rachel must really drill him with questions, huh? Ask him every single thing he learned from the ghost girl? No, she hangs up pretty quickly. I think she wants to do this on her own. Oh, okay, strange strategy. So then eventually Rachel and Noah are gonna find this well that's like a hundred feet deep. Wow, 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 wow. And as they're investigating it, all these nails and screws start raising by themselves and then Rachel gets hit in the head with a TV. What? Yeah, the ghost girl smacks her with a TV and she falls down the well. Wow, so she dies? Somehow she doesn't, but she finds the ghost girl's body and they give her a proper burial. Oh, that's nice. Yeah, it seems like a nice ending, but then when she tells her creepy son about it, he's like, you helped her? You're not supposed to help her. Uh-oh, creepy boy knows something. Uh-oh is right, so then Samara comes out of Noah's TV. Oh, so he dies instantly like the girl at the beginning? No, for some reason she's really gonna take her time 
time on this one and walks super slowly. Up to her, I guess. So what would have happened if Noah had been standing next to a Jumbotron or like in Times Square? Well, I do have a Samara versus Godzilla script I could pitch ya. Hey, nope, that sounds awful. You're lost, sir. So how come Rachel wasn't killed if it turns out this girl actually was evil? Well, she realized that because she made a copy of the tape, the curse was lifted off of her. Didn't she make that copy towards the beginning of the movie? Pretty early on, yeah. So if that's what lifted the curse, why did supernatural stuff happen to her the whole time? So the movie can happen. Well, okay then. And so then she has her creepy son make a copy of the tape, and then we're gonna insinuate that everyone in the audience is gonna die a week after watching this movie. Very creepy and slightly threatening. So what do you think? Well, it sounds like a real spook fest. Yeah, you think so? Yeah, and if it works, then we could just remake all the scary Japanese movies. All of them? All of them. Hey guys, it's Ryan here. Hope you like that pitch meeting. There are over 100 episodes of pitch meeting on the channel that you could check out. I also have some other videos on there, so click around. Also, let me know in the comments section what other movies you'd like to see these pitches for. Don't forget to hit the like button, the subscribe button, the bell button, the button button, I don't know. Thanks for watching, guys. I'll see you next time.